Good morning, Mount Moriah. It's Kimberly Joy Morgan. I am so excited to be a part of Temple Cleanse with you. I hope you are ready for this next week of Temple Cleanse. And I know that many amazing things are going to start to unfold for you spiritually and physically, along with mental clarity as well. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into why we're asking you to stay hydrated with water. Yes, water, not juice, not anything else, but just water. And we're gonna talk about the benefits of hydration. There are so, so many. So we're gonna take a moment, just about 15 minutes, I'm gonna run through them really quickly. If you have questions for me, remember you can always reach out to me at info at doallthingswithjoy.com. So why is it important to stay hydrated? Well, it's important for electrolyte balance. It supports our digestion. It allows our bodies to disperse nutrients. And it also helps to maintain normal functioning of the cardiovascular and immune systems. So those are some very important things going on there. So the benefits, I say, of drinking water, number one, we talked about electrolyte balance. So you know, we all know athletes, they get dehydrated and then they end up drinking something like Gatorade or they say they don't have enough electrolytes. We want to, they want to make sure that if you have enough water in your body, it allows that functioning of the electrolytes to balance in the body. So we don't want to get dehydrated for those reasons. Also, it's important for nutrient and oxygen transportation. So when you eat your food, you want your nutrients to go to your cells. If you're dehydrated, it's very hard for those nutrients to enter the cells and for it to be beneficial to the growth of our cells and its ability to reproduce in a way that is healthy. It's also transportation for oxygen in the body, right? And so we need that oxygen to live. It is our breath, it is our life source. So through the blood and through the breath, water is absolutely needed. Also temperature regulation, for those of us who are too hot or too cold, getting the adequate amount of water is going to be really paramount for our bodies to maintain homeostasis. It's also important for the normalization of blood pressure. If, you have, if you're dehydrated, you can have low blood pressure, so we wanna make sure that we're doing that and stabilizing your heartbeat. The other thing to make sure is that if you don't have enough water in your blood, then it gets very thick, and thick blood can cause strokes and heart attacks because it can't go through the veins as easily. So think about a straw and when you have a smoothie that's too thick, you can't suck it up, right? Or if it's just right, it comes up um, and flows through it, through it easily. And if it's too watery, then it's just not right, right? So we wanna make sure we have that water that's very consistent for the blood flowing and coursing through our veins that it doesn't get stuck and block any particular artery. The other thing is it's important for the removal of waste and bacteria from the body. We'll talk about that in a little more detail later. Um, but it's also great for the digestive process, including forming stool and producing bowel movements so that you don't get constipated or on the other side, the flip side, have diarrhea, too much of that. And it's also great for repairing muscles and cushioning joints. So think about when you're exercising or you, know, you are lifting weights just at work or doing something, your muscles always tearing down. You need that water and hydration to build those cells of the muscle back up. And then it's also great for the lubrication of our joints, things like arthritis, old age sets in. Uh, some of you young bucks may not know about that, but at 44, my knees, when I jump up and down, start telling me. Uh, so I just want you to know that water is important for those reasons. Now remember, it prevents dehydration, and it, the symptoms of dehydration could include poor concentration, if you have a hard time focusing, fatigue, low energy during workouts, if you get headaches. I always tell my clients, if you have a headache before you reach for an Advil or you know an over-the-counter medication, make sure that you drink a, you know eight to 16 ounces of water. 16 is what I prefer. Maybe rub some peppermint essential oil on your temples and wait 15 minutes. A lot of times your headache will go away because it's actually a sign of dehydration. So know that. And then also weakness. Uh, dehydration can, can cause weakness in the body, low blood pressure, which we talked about a little bit before, and dizziness. 
So if you're not getting enough water, if you're feeling that you have dizziness or low blood pressure, think about increasing your hydration. Also, consuming enough fluids were suggested in studies that it may help prevent mood swings. So if you feel like you're going back and forth between happy, sad, or angry and you know elated, think about that. Lack of focus and even problem memorizing new information. So we want to make sure that we're drinking water for those things to not occur. Also, in elderly population, be careful to avoid dehydration for many reasons that we stated earlier, but also as you get older, your sense of thirst decreases. So sometimes you may feel like you're not thirsty, but you actually need water. So as someone in the elderly population, make sure that's something that you're aware of. Plus, if you take certain medications, it can also affect um, fluid loss and can create dehydration in the body. Also, drinking enough water, aim to consume other electrolytes too, like magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium, and eating a healthy diet is really, really important. So if you are an athlete, make sure that you are drinking extra water. Um, if you will go out for a walk and you start to sweat, or if you, you know, do a run or a bike ride or anything lifting weights and you really start to work up a sweat, remember you're losing fluids, so you need to replace those. Also, it supports digestion and detoxification. So when it comes to your digestive health, you know, why do we want to drink water? Well, water is required for the kidney and the liver to cleanse the blood and to produce urine and to help your body get rid of waste. So very important for us to make sure that we're drinking enough water to help with our detoxification process. And it can also help us to not develop kidney stones and I have heard they are about as painful as childbirth so I want you to make sure that you are drinking water and even lemon water can help reduce the possibility of developing kidney stones so that's very important also staying hydrated when you're sick is important and I hope no one's dealing with that but it also increases the amount of mucus that you have so that you can get that out and it's beneficial to carry white blood cells and germs out of your diet all right so that's very important the other thing i want you to make sure that you're aware of is that when you drink water and you eat fiber beneficial dietary fiber you're less likely to deal with constipation or diarrhea so getting an adequate amount of water can help with that elimination process it also keeps your calories in check, which I think is really great because if we are you know, drinking water, then let's say we have eight ounces before our dinner, we eat our dinner, and then we have eight ounces afterwards, it gives you a sense of fullness. So it can help with that and it can also increase the hydration. This is actually from the Journal of Frontiers. It says that evidence from human and animal studies show that increased hydration leads to body weight loss, maintaining through a um, decrease in feeding and a loss of fat through increased lipostasis. So that's the utilization of fat. So just know that your body may burn more calories the more water you drink, which has a positive effect on your metabolism. All right, so remember that. And we wanna make sure that we're consuming our water beverages um, that are just this water. We're not adding artificial sweeteners or anything like that to it. So just, you can also get a great amount of water from eating melons and iceberg lettuce and tomatoes and other fruits that are full of water. And you actually have more absorption in the cell because it doesn't happen so fast. So think about when you go to, you drink too much water, then you go to the bathroom. If you actually urinate more than you consume, you're now in a deficit. So when you eat something like a melon, you tend to, because of the fiber, it does not go through you. Like people think about something goes straight through them. It doesn't do that. And that allows the water to go into the cells and plump the cells before exiting the body as waste. So you can think about that as well. The other great thing about drinking a lot of water is that it will improve your hair, your skin, your nails, all of that. So brighter eyes and thicker hair, all of that kind of good stuff. So hydration is really important in that matter. If you tend to have bloodshot eyes, I would say increase your hydration, especially if you're getting enough sleep and your skin will not be dull. You'll have a nice luster to it. 
So I think those are some of the benefits I wanted to run through. I'm kind of looking at my notes. Um, now the big question is how much water should I drink? And there is a jury out on that. So the Institute of Medicine recommends nine to 13 cups of water per day. The Harvard School of Medicine tells us that four to six cups is standard. And then studies included by the National Institute of Health suggest between six and 10 cups. Now my head is spinning. Let's just say this, why don't we try to do instead of eight cups, think about your body weight. If you're 120 pounds, you need 60 ounces. If you're 150, you need 75. If you're 200, you need 100. If you are over, if you're 300 or over, it's very difficult to get 150 ounces of water in a day. So just aim for that 100 mark and do the best you can, okay? So that's one of the things we wanna make sure. Now, how do we get it in? I always say carry around a stainless steel water bottle, kind of like I have. This is my best friend. I have one in pink and I have one in rose gold. And I fill it up with water every day. Start with 16 ounces of water first thing in the morning if you can. And if you have a hard time just drinking plain water, I suggest adding essential oils, something like a um, citrus fresh from Young Living or lemon essential oil. Now, please do not go to Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx, or Walgreens to buy your essential oils. I know that Pastor Byron knows how to get therapeutic grade essential oils like this. If you don't and you need some help, I can help you as well. Um, but don't, please don't go out and just get any kind of essential oil and put it in your water. But essential oils and water are really, really good. Gives it great flavor and it makes you want to drink them more often. Uh, so you can actually add peppermint to it. You could add, like I said, a citrus fresh, which has a spearmint and citrus together. And just you could do all types of things that would help enhance the flavor of your water. You can also just use natural lemon and lime. You can also put strawberries in your water, cucumbers, anything that's going to help you drink water more often, please do so. You can make a big batch of cucumber water if you like that in the morning. It's very refreshing and um, cucumber mint is one of my favorites. So just know that you can add those things, making sure that you have your water bottle, don't leave home without it, and please use only stainless steel or glass. These plastic bottles are no bueno, okay? They're not good because they have BPA. Um, even the plastic water bottles that you buy that are bigger, that are reusable, that say BPA free, if you can reduce the amount of plastic that you are consuming in your life, Meaning what happens when I say consuming no no one's like eating plastic But little particles of plastic get into your water and those toxins go into your body and your liver and your kidneys have to function and process them out so I just advise to try your best to Not use a plastic water bottle all the time. All right, and let's see anything else that I want to make sure that um You know just really remember that your body is mostly made up of water just like the earth is mostly made up of water. And it is affected by, like, you know, the, the moon, how the tide is affected by the moon? Well, think about the rise and fall of water in relationship to a tide cycle and the moon cycle. Well, your body is the same way. It will affect and have different effects based upon the amount of water in your body and how the cycle of the moon goes through. So just be mindful of that i know that's a lot of information we can go into more detail later if you have questions but that is very much can affect your mood your state of energy level and all of those uh, related aspects to living your most vibrant and full life if you are pregnant if you're sick if you're breastfeeding you need extra water as well and i think if i'm not mistaken those are all of the things that I wanted to make sure I went over with water. Please stay away from fruit juice because it has too much sugar in it. And if you're taking out, if you're one person who drinks sodas all the time and juices, please increase your water because you're, you're taking away a liquid supply of, of a form of water for your body and that can constitute for dehydration if you do not substitute. So make sure you are drinking plenty of water. And I know the first week it said 20 ounces of water. Well, that was just a minimum. Hopefully you were drinking other things as well, but now that we're pulling out some of the juices and things, be sure that you increase your water. Next week, I'm gonna to come to you and talk about 
all of the information about sugar and what sugar does to the body and why we really want to stay away from the fruit juices uh, and it'll be very enlightening for you so i hope you're excited about next week's lesson i'm excited about all that you're going to do this week and if you have any questions remember to reach out to me at info at do all things with joy dot com all right peace and blessings and have a wonderful week bye bye